there's some things I hate about PowerPoint, and I figure it's kind of my duty to point them out. So here we go. Here's common PowerPoint mistakes. Uh, number one, uh, people tend to put every word they are going to say on their PowerPoint slides. Although this eliminates the need to memorize your talk, ultimately this makes your slides crowded, wordy, and boring. You will lose your audience's attention before you even reach the bottom of your uh, first slide. Please, please don't do that anymore, please. Uh, number two, most common, uh, many people do not run spell cheek. Big mistake. Nothing makes you look stupider than spelling errors. If it's got a red line under it, recheck the spelling. And then finally, I hate this. Uh, avoid excessive bullet pointing, only bullet key points. Too many bullet points, and your key messages will not stand out. In fact, the term bullet point comes from people firing guns at annoying presenters. Hence the bullet point. Schemes, not good. Clashing background and font colors can lead to distraction, confusion, headache, nausea, vomiting, and loss of bladder control. I can't stay on that one too long. Here's something I've noticed. Uh, the number of PowerPoint slides you have in your talk, uh, the less uh, useful your talk actually is. Unfortunately, uh, my presentation is right there. I've also noticed this, people love to pack data into their presentation, they just shove more and more data thinking it's better, but it's not. The more data you have, the harder it is to read your slide, and the effectiveness plummets. Now you can, uh, you can improve the effectiveness by adding some shading and some 3D effects, and then some second order and third order effects, and then, I know, let's add some labels, that'll help a lot. And that, that's pretty much every marketing slide I've ever seen right there. Some like VP of marketing standing there going, it's real clear in Q4. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> now I'm I'm into uh, in animation. People become animators in PowerPoint. You can have things flying all over the place, and that can be good. If you're a visual learner, that will improve the effectiveness of your performance. But if you're easily distracted, more animations and people have no idea what you're talking about. They're just, wow, that is cool, wow. And there's regions here, by the way. There's the uh, simple but uh, effective region. There's the active but confusing, the uh, effective but boring, the active but ineffective, the dull but static region, the uh, busy but useless, the ADD only region, the uh, useful but amusing, the stupid but confusing, the dull triangle, the hyper triangle, the sleepy square, the dizzying pentagon, and everything else I just uh, call pointless motion. That slide right there took me an hour and a half to make right there. PowerPoint can just suck the life out of you. It's amazing. I've also come up with this. It's a kind of a little science I've invented called font analysis. Basically, the font you choose says something about who you are as a person. There's a huge list of fonts, and you choose one, and that says something about you. So be careful the font you choose. For example, if you choose Courier New, uh, it happens to be my favorite, uh, you're probably organized and structured. If you choose Matisse, it means you're artistic. And if you choose Times New Roman, it means you're lazy, apathetic, and unimaginative, and you always use the default. Oh. A lot of Times New Roman people. Welcome. We have some more. Uh, if you use freehand script, uh, you're a horrible speller, so you try to hide it with a hard-to-read font. Very smart. If you use Gothic, it means you're very pale and you wear black. And if you choose Wingdig, it means you're a nerd and you have no life. In fact, if you know what those symbols mean, you'll never have a date, trust me. <laughs> Don't bother. Welcome to learning about visual aids. We just took a humorous look at creating visual aids and the problems and pitfalls that are with PowerPoint. And now I want to show you the rules and guidelines that I will be grading you on. The soul never thinks without a picture. You've heard a thousand times a picture is worth a thousand words, and that's truly what visual aids can do for your audience. This screen shows you how just verbal alone, we don't remember very much. And if you look just at the visual alone, 
about three hours later, uh, we can remember about 70%, but three days later, only about 20%. But if we use both verbal and visual, our three hours later comprehension goes way up, as well as our three days later. So the percentage of the speech that your audience will remember is greatly enhanced by using visual aids. These are the three things that I will be grading you on. We're going to discuss the appearance of your visual aids, whether you're using PowerPoint or you're using objects, it's important that your visual aids look professional and that they're easy to read. Secondly, they should be purposeful. You can't just show us something because you want to show us a picture of your dog. There's got to be a purpose behind it. So make sure that it connects to what you're trying to do get to in your speech. And then lastly, I'm going to give you some proper guidelines on how to use the visual aids appropriately. So to start off with, we need to talk about size. If you're using PowerPoint, it's recommended that you use 32 plus point font. And most people don't recognize this. They think that the font they see on their computer, about a 14, 18 point font is enough, but you really want to make sure it's large enough for everyone to see easily. And that goes with all visual aids, whether it's a picture or an object, whatever you're showing, it needs to be easily seen by the audience. Another big error people make is they think that their PowerPoint slides are giant note cards. And so they'll stand in front of it and they'll talk to the note cards rather than making good eye contact with us. And it takes practice, but you want to make sure you're addressing the visual aid, but addressing the audience at the same time. Some things to know, you can use video and audio clips. If you use a clip, it should be no longer than 30 seconds or you're going to lose your audience's attention. Make sure your volume is set to a reasonable level and make sure that the clip doesn't overtake your presentation. It should merely be there to enhance what you're already showing the audience. Visual aids need to maintain the audience's attention. So after you display it, you should explain it, and then you need to cover it up or black it out. One way to do this with PowerPoint is to use blank slides. For example, I've put in a blank slide here, it just has a pure black background, and that refocuses the audience attention back to you rather than focusing on the PowerPoint slide. As far as how much text you can put on slides, you need to follow what I call the 5 by 5 rule. No more than 5 lines per slide and no more than 5 words per line. Let me give you some examples. This slide here shows too little information. There's just simply not enough to be effective for the audience. This slide here shows too much information. This is where your note cards pretty much become your notes. If we follow the 5 by 5 rule, saying that there are only 5 lines on there, no more than 5 words per line, you notice that the audience gets just enough information to be able to understand and enhance what you're saying, but not so much that it takes over your presentation. Another technique we can use is what's called progressive revelation, and that's where I uncover one line at a time, and then I'll uncover the next line, and that way the audience stays focused on exactly what you're seeing. And that way, your visual aid is really maintaining their attention. Sometimes students aren't sure quite how to do this. This can be done through custom animation in PowerPoint. You want to be careful with the colors you're using for backgrounds, typefaces. You want to be careful with italics, underlining, and excessive motion. All of these things take away from a really polished presentation. Here's an example of some contrasting colors, and they're really the best ones to use. You'll notice the blue and the purple down at the bottom is harder to read, so you want to make sure that it's really easy for your audience to see, and contrasting colors do that for the audience. This is an example of typefaces, and you can tell which ones are easier to read and which ones are going to be harder to read. And even though they may look like more fun, more creativity, they really just distract from your presentation. So keep with simple typefaces. You want to keep some consistency with the colors, the bullets, the fonts, the spacing, and the size, and that way you're going to produce a really polished presentation as these three slides here show you. 
you're going to use handouts or objects, you want to make sure that the handouts should be passed after the conclusion of your speech. If you pass a handout out during the middle of your speech, the audience will lose focus on what you're saying and just skip to the handout. And you really want to be careful about passing objects around. It's probably much better to allow the audience to come up and look at them at the end of your speech rather than to actually pass them around. Often, students will say, well, what sort of visual aids can we use? And you can use a variety of visual aids, but you really need to make sure that you're selecting them with care. And the main thing you should ask is, are they appropriate for this audience? A lot of times, you may find a visual aid that's shocking, that's exciting, that's going to really shock the audience. But is it really appropriate, or is it detracting from your speech? So make sure that it's appropriate, it's not too graphic, so that the audience is focused on your message, not on the visual aid. Do not use dangerous or illegal presentation aids. This seems kind of like a, a no-brainer, but it's important to recognize that if something's illegal, it's not something you want to be showing in your presentation unless you have uh, police approval. <laughs> Lastly, if you're going to use animals, you want to make sure you have caution. Animals act unpredictably, and so you really have to be careful if you're going to use something like that. Lastly, Murphy's Law. What can go wrong will go wrong. So you need to prepare for what could go wrong. What if the PowerPoint doesn't work? What if your video clip isn't working? You need to have a backup plan. You can print out slides of, of your PowerPoint. You can have extra visual aids so that you always have some sort of a backup. And then lastly, practice, practice, practice. There is nothing that will be more essential to your success than practicing your speech. So that's a short demonstration on visual aids. These guidelines can also be found uh, under the Lessons tab. So go ahead and check there if you want to review these guidelines.